business like show business like no business I know. Everything about it is appealing. Everything that traffic will allow. Nowhere could you get that happy feeling when you are stealing that extra bow. There's no people like show people. They smile when they are lost. Yesterday they told you you would not go far. The night you open, and there you are. Next day on your dressing room, they hung a star. Let's go on with the show. I'll tell you why show business is very important. Because real life sucks. I've had three family members with medical issues this month. Uh, so, yeah, we need entertainment. And I think God invented it. I think God invented laughter and creativity. And so I think show business is very important. Of course, I don't like the business part of it. But I like the show part of it. I like to be the spectator just as much as I like to be the spectate I stumbled upon a picture of my first play. I did do Edith Ann in high school. Stole, uh, copied Lily Tomlin's routine about the five-year-old who talks like this. My name is Edith Ann, now five and a half years old. I never asked to be bored if I did. Mama would have said no. You know that one? And I did win the uh, Language Arts Festival. That was the only time I ever talked in front of an audience until college and show on Netflix that I'm binging is called Offspring. It's from Australia. It's so fantastic. I mean, I know the themes have a lot of sexual immorality, but you know, most, most shows now do. There's a piece of art in Geraldine's house and uh, it's a curtain. It looks like a stage to me. And um, it reminds me of my first Tonight Show I said, I see it on the show tonight. I said, well, what does she do? She says, just, you'll see. Uh, she's from Florida, and she's been working downtown at the Variety Arts Theater. And apparently she starts off the evening as uh, the souvenir photographer, comes around and takes uh, pictures, circulates, and then afterwards gets up and does her act. And she's become a big hit. One newspaper critic said that she leaves the audience thunderstruck. Uh, I'm with you. I don't know what to expect. But would you welcome Victoria Jackson? <laughs> have something to fall back on to. So I took up singing. And so I really came here because I would like to tell you some of my poems. 
and the first one is A Mustache by Victoria Jackson. A, a Gymnast's Life by Victoria Jackson. <laughs> to win a meet or bruise your heels. Because your muscles are big, the boys all tease you. You did a full twist, your coach won't believe you. You must work on your routines night and day. Listen to your coach repeatedly say, straighten your knees, point your toes, don't look down on their toes, lift up your head, show off more. Your knees are bent like they were before. You haven't been doing your splits every night. I can tell you're way too tight. Life of a gymnast sounds like pain and trouble all the time. But the life of a gymnast really is sublime. To win a meet in a mile or two, a trophy's awful nice. The pain or satisfaction a gymnast has from learning a trick is paradise. Life of just religion told gyms for him to tell. it's tough, but it's really not rare to tell a gymnast by the smile she'll wear. <laughs> by Victoria Jackson. <laughs> the life of a rug is not sublime. You get walked on and stepped all over all the time. You get beat when you're dirty, and when you're not clean, you get sucked by an incredibly painful machine. <laughs> My only joy is when a boy romances a girl by a fire, I get to hear their intimate whispers and feel their intense desire. Thank you. Thank you very much. Can you hear me? This is my final encore poem. And um, I would ask you for a sip of your water, except then I don't have time to do my poem. So I'll do it, and then I'll drink water. <laughs> okay. Okay. Infatuation by Victoria Jackson. <laughs> I have flipped over you. <laughs> what more can I do to make you understand? I have flipped over you. <laughs> You've taken over me somehow When you speak, my knees get weak My heart becomes a puddle of love You're surely heaven sent What a gent Must be an angel from above I have flipped over you <laughs> Thank you It's a curtain. It looks like a stage to me. And um, it reminds me of my first Tonight Show um, where I was backstage and Jim McCauley, the talent scout who discovered me, um, along with Mel Larson and Johnny Crawford and John Schromp, all, well, he was standing there and he's holding the curtain and Johnny Carson was announcing my name and Jim McCauley was shaking. And I go, why are you shaking? I'm the one who has to go out there. My whole career, my whole life is based on this moment. And he goes, because if Johnny doesn't like you, I get fired. And it was like he took the pressure off of me. It was weird. Like he was nervous for me. And I just remember him holding the curtain so that I didn't have to futz around with it, I guess. It was what they did. 
And so when he, they said my name, he just pulled it back and then I walked out and hit the mark on the stage and uh, I was so nervous. I felt like I went out of my body and was watching me do my act. Anyway, I'm binging my show Offspring last night, <clears throat> season five out of seven. And all of a sudden, the lead character, Nina, the doctor, the obstetrician, the blonde who is has started wearing her hair like mine and a bun on her top of her head, does a handstand way. She does a handstand on an elevator. Uh, yeah, I was so, oh, I was like, hey, that's my trick. There's no business like show business like no business I know. Everything about it is appealing. Everything that traffic will allow. So your fans know about the Hannah Sweet who sold millions of records. But who's the woman behind the star? I need Tommy! I can't do it anymore! Get out! That's it. It's over. Go home, Hannah. Excuse me. It worked. And you are. I'm your cousin. Welcome to Lost Heart. Welcome back, actually. You do know who this is, right? Of course. You my world famous stepsister that I've never met. <laughs> Why would she do that? She never knew the Harris we knew. A clone? Huh? What happened here? Oh, she doesn't know. Harris died watching a UFO. Yeah, Chip calls it a UFA. Oh, what? Unidentified flying <laughs> angel. Yeah. I'm with UFO Worldwide. I was hoping I could ask you guys a few questions. Did you get the probe? I didn't think it would all come back so quickly. A reason for all this mankind has been staring at lights in the sky for millennia trying to make sense of things that are beyond our capacity to know who's to say how god reveals himself what with lights in the sky if she repents will god forgive her well of course he's forgiven worse than that right be very happy in heaven. Yeah, why is that? Because you came back. Okay, I just happened to have sold my soul to the devil as a girl, but no big deal. Can wait. There's no business like show business like no business I know. Everything about it is appealing. Everything that traffic will allow. Nowhere could you get that happy feeling. 